Here's where you queue up to ride the train. <laughs> we are heading downstairs. There's the little mail train. Crammed in here like a little sardine. You're <laughs> shunned up there. We were trying to sit in the seat together. We're not large people and it was not it's, comfortable. It's tight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the train, as this may cause it to stop suddenly. Thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Mail Rail. You're about to explore some of London's hidden underground postal railway. I'm Andy, your guide today, and I'm joined by Ray Middlesworth. Hi, Ray. Hi. I worked here as an engineer for 27 years, keeping the trains. But not just the many old trains. This year, the narrow gauge railway was designed to carry mail. So if you're feeling a little crap, that's why. Although we have a driver today, the original mail trains drive us. It was a huge network of automated electric trains running right under central London, carrying mail between main railway stations and sorting offices much faster than along the congested streets above our heads. And it's amazing to think construction of the railway began as far back as 1914, when the tunnels dug by hand. Work was put on hold during the First World War. When the railway finally opened in 1927, it cut the journey time across London from a few hours to just 30 minutes. It's an engineering model. Our railroad almost not stop, night and day, for over 75 years until 2003. As we explore, we'll be going back in time to see tunnels, loaded platforms, and a few surprises. We'll be at our first stop in a few minutes. We stop. Pleasant sorting office, heading east to Whitechapel. It was hard work down here, but we all thought we were part of something important. There was enormous team spirit. We seemed to get ourselves in the news a lot in the 90s. It didn't hurt that Bruce Willis made a film down here called Hudson Hawk. In the 80s, we had our 60th anniversary. Along with that, we had a new brand and finally some new trains. I'll tell you two things that sum up the 70s. Postcodes made life a lot easier, and strikes made life not so easy. The swinging 60s. Those World Cup stamps sold out after England won. There were a few celebrations down here that summer. air travel became much more common, and so did air mail, and that meant even more of it travelled along mail rail.
the railway was bombed several times. This station suffered the most damage when it was hit in 1943. Amazingly, the railway was back up and running the very next day. That reflected how vital the railway had become. to Liverpool Street Station, where mail was transferred to the main railway network. Further down that tunnel, it looks like a maintenance crew is checking the flood barriers. This side's good, what's that like? Big heavy steel doors that close it off. During the railway's construction, 10 men scrambled to safety when the nearby river fleet broke into where they were digging. The barriers here were installed later, after the war, but they never had to be used. Uh, Ray, there's something else here that people might be interested in. Can you tell us about that? When we move off just up ahead, look down towards the track. You might catch a glimpse of the train graveyard where disused trains are stored. I must have worked on all of them at some time or other. We could draw power from the next station along to keep everything running. And of course, us guys in the engineering teams always kept the trains and track in good order. Okay, on we go. Trainloads of mail arrived at every station every few minutes, with less than 60 seconds to unload and reload. Let's follow a few of those letters. This is the Colonel. He's writing to the famous poet W.H. Alden at the GBO Film Unit. This is Kathleen. She's keeping in touch with her sweetheart in the Navy. 
And this is Mary. Her letter is very special because it's going to a princess. Darling Bert, that neighbour is keeping you away from me for far too long. And everyone says the war's coming. I do hope they're wrong. Dear Mr. Bolton, I think I'm glad to express my admiration for your work on the recent film about the Latin American Christian Day.
enjoyed your tour of London's hidden postal railway. It was unique, and I loved being part of the great team keeping the railway running. We hope you'll enjoy exploring the rest of the exhibition just as much. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's probably the weirdest train ride we've ever taken. <laughs> I don't think we'll top it. It was different. It's cool. Get out the other side. There's the train. And here's the train. It's a battery operated a little electric train. All right, everybody, so as you can see, we just got off of the train ride that you saw there in the video. It was cute, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was cool. Um, it's a 15 minute ride. Yeah, very, very unique. Um, it's very tiny in there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're claustrophobic, you don't like closing spaces, or um, it's also a little warm. I mean, it's not like unbearable, but it's a little warm. Yeah, but if you're dressed for the winter, it's really close. To That's true, yeah. too. Um, but it was good. It was very informative, and it was cool to see how it worked. And uh, it was crazy to see how old it was. So yeah, I think it that started too. In 1904, was it? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, Dug but, by hand. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know how much the tickets were to get in here. Uh, it, 18, it was about 19 pounds. 19 pounds. So you know, with a conversion rate somewhere in the low 20s, right? So I, I mean, just for the train ride alone, I think it was cool and very worth it. Yeah. So um, if you have some extra time and you're here, definitely recommend to do this.